All right, so I'm gonna show you what to do first and then I'll explain everything afterwards. So as it stands now, I removed all the compression so my track just sounds like this. So the first thing that you want to do is you wanna figure out what you want to actually have pumped or side-chained. And so typically bass is what is going to be side-chained, um, but in this instance, I want everything that is playing the chords to also be side-chained and ducked out of the way. So the way we're gonna do this, we're gonna select all the tracks. So I'll hit Control and click to get all of the tracks that I want. I'm gonna right-click and I'm going to add a bus for the selected channels. I'm gonna label this duck. And then all you're gonna do is you're gonna take Studio One Stock Compressor, which I have favorited here. You're gonna add that to this. And then this is where you want to sidechain. So you're gonna click this sidechain button and then you're going to look through here and find your kick. You should have your tracks labeled by the way. And we'll do that and we'll X out of here for a moment. We're gonna go to the kick and it should show up here and it'll probably start off blue like this. You wanna click this marker and make it green. And then once we have that, we can dial in our settings here. And like I said, I'll explain all this afterwards. I, for those of you who just wanna dive in right away, this is how to do it. So if we play the track here, don't really hear a lot going on. So we need to change a lot of these. So I'm just gonna go through um, what I've set. So you wanna knock the attack down to uh, about 0.5. We're gonna put the release to about roughly 50-ish. And we're gonna turn the ratio up to about six and we're gonna increase the knee. Again, I'll explain this later. And so now, once we hear it, there's still nothing happening because what we have to do is decrease this threshold here. And so I'm going to start decreasing this and you should start to hear it. Boom. And that's how you create the ducking effect. Simple as that. So now I'm going to explain how this all works. So essentially what you want to do is we're using a compressor to lower the volume of the audio um, that's being sent to it. So what's happening is we sent all of these uh, tracks, so the bass, the synths, the keys, we sent them all to one bus. So everything is getting routed to this duck channel. And so what we're doing is typically a compressor would work in that you have a certain threshold and any audio level that goes above that threshold will get lowered a certain amount. But the interesting thing about a side chain is that instead of using the signal from the incoming audio, it uses the audio from another source. So in this case, it's using the kick drum as the source. So as the kick drum reaches goes above the threshold, it lowers the audio of the bass, keys, and synths, all right? So that's basically how the sidechain works. Now, to go over um, first the kick part, so this is the send. The reason we have this green is so that uh, if we mess with this fader here, it won't affect the amount of ducking that takes place. So for example, if I take this all the way down, you still have the, the ducking effect. Uh, and so that makes it really neat if you wanna keep the instrumentals ducking, but without the uh, but without the actual kick drum. Okay, so now let's go over the compressor settings and I'll kinda explain how it works here. So the let's start with you're, we kind of already talked about the threshold. So the threshold is the level at which it takes the compressor to actually kick in. So by lowering this down, the more you lower it, the more you'll hear that ducking effect. So we can really make this pronounced here. And you can get like a seriously intense ducking effect by doing that. 
So that's basic, basically how the threshold works. The ratio is basically how uh, much it reduces the signal. So I don't exactly know the metrics. I think it basically for every decibel increase, it lowers it by six. I don't know exactly, but basically the higher the ratio, the steeper it's going to compress or the, the more it's going to compress. So I typically keep that around five to six the attack is how quickly it takes the compressor. So basically for this, if I have a fast attack time, then as soon as the kick drum hits, it's gonna immediately lower the audio level. So if you watch, if I increase this attack, you'll notice there's gonna be more of a delay when it comes to the ducking. So as it's lower, you'll get it. You'll get the ducking effect more readily, which is typically what you want, especially for a punchy kick drum. You want it to kick in almost right away, and so that's why I have that set there. The release is how long it takes for the signal to go back to the original level. So if this is too fast, it'll be real clippy, uh, for lack of a better word. So I'm going to lower that so you can hear what that sounds like. So you can hear it kind of just cuts and rises, cuts and rises. And I mean, you know, this is all based on artistic effects. So if you want that, great. But for this, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. So I, but if it's too high, then it'll increase in volume too slow. Um, and so to hear that, now it's not working. So I found, for the somewhere between about 50 to 60 milliseconds is usually pretty good for a release time. And then the last thing here is the knee. So if we lower the knee, you'll see that this graph, instead of having a curve to it, it becomes a, well, knee. So it becomes um, more boxy or sharp rather. And so we want to avoid that because because we have a fast attack time, if this knee is uh, more sharp like it is here, you might hear some like clicking as it goes through. So if we play this. And it's not doing it too much with this. Um, whoops. But sometimes if you have a very plucky or uh, some sort of a harsh instrument that you're compressing, then by having softening the knee, you can make it to where the transients aren't so intense. So I usually keep that about midway. Now, one other thing to discuss is, let's say we want to carry this over, um, but we don't wanna keep adjusting the fader all the time. And we want this the ducking to happen without the kick drum there. One thing you can just simply do is just right click, duplicate the track, and hit mute for the original kick, and then um, lower the fader for the second kick. And so now uh, you'll hear the you'll hear the ducking without the kick. So really how this would be, technically you wouldn't have this muted, but if we were to migrate this this whole section over in terms of arrangement, we can just move these kicks over. And so we would leave this here because we don't want to hear the kick and we would move the arrangement to this area. And then that way you would be able to hear the ducking effect without the actual compressor. Now, could you just do this simply with kickstart here? Yeah, you absolutely could. But the problem with Kickstart is that it only does four on the floor. And so the reason why you want to develop your ability to add an actual side chain is because let's say we altered this kick. I'm gonna mute this track here or remove it. And let's say our pattern, I mean, this is not gonna be a very good pattern, but let's say we took each of these, so I'm shift clicking to, to select multiple instances of the kick and Let's say we moved all of these over to there. In this instance, 
kickstart would not be ducking out of the drums because it's no longer a four on the floor pattern. But now, because everything is side chained, wherever this kick is, it's going to duck out of the way. So now if we listen to this, I would never use that kick pattern, but just for you know an example, wherever you put that kick is where it's going to duck out of the way. So I hope this has been helpful for you. Um, and if you are also interested in making uh, some really awesome vocal chops in Studio One, I have this video here, and so that might be cool for you to check out as well. And until next time, I will see you in the next video.